Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, this is a question from the C1, the old C1 syllabus, uh, June 2016, question number 10. Okay, and this is also actually question number 7 from a paper that I made um, to be more in line with the new P1 syllabus. So um, I've taken some questions from the C2 of this year and the questions from the C1 of this year and kind of mix them together to make a p1 paper and i've added a bit to the end of this question as well which wasn't in the original paper to, to incorporate some new part of the syllabus so um the first few parts of this are just the same as the question number 10 as noted here of this june 2016 c1 paper now first of all the question tells us about the points p which are zero two so i'll just mark that over here 0, 2, and the point Q, which is 3, 7, which is over here. This is 3, 7. They lie on line 1, L1, as shown in figure 2. The line L2 is perpendicular to line 1 and passes through Q and crosses the x-axis at the point R, as shown in figure 2. So these two lines here are perpendicular. They cross at right angles. Line 2 is perpendicular to line 1 and passes through the point Q and also passes the x-axis at the point R, as shown, it says find an equation for line 2 giving your answers in the form AX plus BY plus C equals 0. So Q was 3, 7, and P was 0, 2. Okay, and these lines are perpendicular. Okay, so we've got to find an equation for line 2. An equation for line 2, which is this line over here. That's what we've got to do. All right, so now um, we can find the equation of line 2 if we consider the the gradient of line one why because to find the equation of line two we need two things to find the equation of line two we need two things one of the things we need is the gradient of line two which we don't have but we know it's linked to the gradient of line one as they're perpendicular it's a negative reciprocal of the gradient of line one which we can find so that's one thing we can find that and the second thing we need is a point on the line now one of the points that we know is definitely on this line is the point Q, which is 3, 7. So if I can just find the gradient of line 1, with that I can find the gradient of line 2, and with that I can find the equation of line 2 alongside the point that I know it passes through. So let's first find the, for line 1, let's find the gradient of line 1. The gradient of line 1 is going to be the change in Y, which is 7 minus 2, over the change in X, which is 3 minus 0. Okay, so that's going to give you 5 over 3, and we know that line 1 is perpendicular to line 2. Therefore, the gradient of line 2 is equal to the negative reciprocal, which is change the sign and flip the fraction upside down of, of uh, line 1. So the gradient of line 2 is minus 3 fifths. So we now have all the information we need to find the equation of the line. So um, I personally prefer to use the equation y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, especially when we have a fractional gradient, and especially when we want to express the, the answer in this form, ax plus by plus e equals zero, where a, b, and c must be integers. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a y minus the y coordinate, which is seven, equals m, which is minus three fifths, times x minus the x coordinate, which is three, and then I'm going to um, modify this or rearrange this to uh, put it in the form required. So we want to get rid of the fraction, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. So I have 5y minus 7 equals minus 3 times x minus 3. And now I can, um, what did I do here? Silly mistake. So you're going to multiply both sides by 5. You're going to have 5y minus 35. Be very careful not to make silly mistakes there. Okay, 5y minus 35 equals minus 3 times x minus 3. And then you're going to um, multiply by negative 3 minus 3x plus 9. And now we can um, subtract 9 from both sides of the equation and add 3 to both sides. So we end up with 3x plus 5y minus 44 equals 0. And that's the equation of line 2. Um, that we're looking for. Okay, so that's part A done. Now we've got to go on to part B. Okay, um, and we need to have this equation written down. 
I think for part B, so that's what that's doing over here. So we have we want to find the exact coordinates of R. So we need to find the coordinates of R, and we can see that pretty simply that we know that um, R is on the x-axis, and we know that on the x-axis, we know that the y value is zero. So the equation of line two passes through um, R on the x-axis, which means if we substitute y equals zero into the equation for line two, we will find y equals zero into there we'll find the x coordinate of r okay so we can say that and when y equals zero you have 3x minus 44 equals zero so x equals 44 over 3 so we can say the coordinates of the point r 44 over 3 and zero and that's part b done okay that's pretty simple for part b okay part c says Find the exact area of the quadrilateral O, R, Q, P, where O is the origin. So let's just make a little uh, diagram to show that area clearly. Let's use a different color. So O to R and R to Q and Q to P. And back to O again. Okay, there we have the quadrilateral O, RQP. Now this shape here, um, we want to find its area. Now there's probably a multi multiple ways of doing so. Um, one of them would be, for example, to make a trapezium shape and a, and a triangle shape. Find the area of each of those and then add them together. Okay. Um, I think that might actually be the easiest way of doing it. You could also find the, the coordinates of this point where this cuts the x-axis what well, that would mean you find the equation of line l then we could find the area of the big triangle and take away the area of the small triangle okay which would be this small triangle over here but that requires you to find the place where this line one passes through the x-axis which means you need to find its its equation all right so that might be a bit more hassle so let's just try and do it in an, in an easier way let's try to make this into into a trapezium Okay, we have, I think we have all the points we need for that. Okay, so we can see that this is the the distance between the parallel sides, which is three. So from here to here is three units. This is the um, length of one parallel side, which is two. This length is seven. And from here to here, okay, this, this is the point three, and this is the point 44 over three. So this length here would be 44 over 3 minus 3 that will give you the length from there to there and we can find the area of this triangle so that's probably the easiest way of doing it so we have the area of a trapezium okay which is this area here where this is 2 and this is 7 and this is 3 so the area of a trapezium is equal to a half times the distance between the parallel sides okay times um, the sum of the parallel sides so a half times 2 plus 7 times 3 this is the distance between the parallel sides because these are the parallel sides here um, this is the sum of the parallel sides and this is a half times that okay so that's going to be equal to a half times 9 times 3 which is 27 over 2 that's the area of this part here then we have the area of the triangle which is this shape here this is 7 the vertical height and this is 44 over 3 minus 3 the base so the area of this is going to be a half times 44 over 3 minus 3 times 7 which would be 7 over 2 times and this is 44 over 3 minus so that's 44 over 3 minus 9 over 3 times oh we've got the 7 there already so 44 minus 9 is 35, yeah, 35 over 3. So you have 7 over 2 times 35 over 3. Okay, that's going to give you 7, that's 210 plus 35, 245 over 6. Yeah, just 35 times 7. 210 and 35 245 over over 6 okay so there we have um, the area of the triangle so we have to add them together 
So the total area, the total area is going to be the sum of 27 over 2 plus 245 over 6. In fact, this can be counted, this can be simplified. I think 3 goes into this, does it? No, it doesn't actually. That's 6 plus 5, no. All right, so now we can add these together. We can convert this over 6. So that's going to be um, times 3, times 3. 3 times uh, 27 is 60 plus 21. That's 81 over 6 plus 245 over 6, which gives you 300. No, that's 400. No, that's 300. 281 plus 245. 81 plus 245. That's a 6, and that's a 12. 326 over 6. Um, what goes into both of these? 2. 2 goes into oh, 326. 1, remainder 1. That's going to be... Uh, 2 goes into 12. 6 times remainder nothing. 100, 163 over 3. Okay, so we have 163 over 3. So is the total area is 163 over 3 square units. So there's the answer to that part, part C of this question. All right, so there we have it. Answer to part, was it C? Yeah, part C. And that's the last part of this question, actually, from the actual paper of C1 2016. I've added a, another part to the question, which we can do in, in a minute. Now, some of you are probably wondering, why don't I use my calculator uh, for these questions here? Um, nowadays, there's no such thing as a non-calculator paper. All right, but if you go back to the origin of this question, or this paper, this paper used to be a non-calculator paper. The C1 paper, you were not allowed to use calculators in it. Okay, so, you know, you'd get questions like the one we've just seen here, which you know require you to do these calculations without a calculator. So that was something which now a lot of students would probably find pretty difficult. And that's um, why you, some of you probably think, oh, some of those older questions seem like a bit easy or whatever. Well, they take a bit longer for you to do without a calculator. So maybe that's one of the reasons why um, some of the questions seem a bit easier. Anyway, so that's uh, the answer to this question. So the reason I'm not using a calculator is because I feel a bit bad that the students who took the actual exam, they weren't allowed to use a calculator for these questions. So kind of like uh, that, that's why for these older C1 papers, I don't use a calculator when I'm doing the steps. But you, of course, in the exam, you can use a calculator for P1. and There's no problem with that. OK, now next question. As I said, this is the part that I've invented in this in this paper. Okay, and they're asking us here to write down the set of inequalities which define the region inside the quadrilateral ORQP. Okay, for, for, for us to do that, we need to know the equation of line 1. We've got to write down the inequalities which de define this region R. Okay, I made up this question because this is something new in the syllabus for P1. Okay, so it's not something that was in C1 before. So we've got to find the inequalities that define this region. So I already know the equation of line 1, which was which was 3x plus 5y minus 44 equals 0. So this is 3x plus 5y minus 44 is equal to 0. That's this the equation of this line here. Okay, um, I know the equation of this line. This is the line y equals 0, the x-axis. That's one of the things that defines this region. The other one of the other ones is also this line, which is x equals zero, the y-axis. Now I need to know the equation of line one, okay? Because that's one of the lines that defines this region R. So um, if we remember, this was the point three seven, and this was the point zero two. So I can use that to find the equation of the line. We can say that the gradient is seven. So the gradient of line one is seven minus two over 3 minus 0. As we found before, that's 5 over 3. So we can say the equation of line 1 is y equals mx, which is 5 over 3x plus 2. I mean, I'm just using that because we know we know the y-intercept is 2 because it goes through the point 0, 2, and the gradient, as we just worked out, is 5 over 3. So we can use this directly. So I can now write down the inequalities that define the region. So we have the, we have the line um, x 
equals zero. I'm not going to put the equal sign now. I'm just going to put leave it blank for now because I'm going to put inequality and y and zero. And I have three x plus five y minus forty four and zero. And I have y and I have on this side five over three x plus two. Okay. So this region R, I want to show this region as defined by these lines. So I can see R is in a region in, in relation to the line x equals 0, where it's greater than x equals 0. So this is going to be greater than. And as these are solid lines, I'll just put greater than or equal to. And I also know the region R is above the line y equals 0. So this is where y is greater than or equal to 0 as well. And for this line, line 2, I can see the region is below that line. Okay, and the way that we've written the equation of the line, okay, we've got the y term on the left and it's a positive uh, coefficient. So I'm going to put less than or equal to. But to be sure, if you want to make sure that you're right, you can choose a point which is in the same side of the line as the region. So we can choose, for example, the origin. It's on the same side of, of that line as this region R. So if we put the values of the origin in here, you'll end up with minus 44 on this side and 0 on that side, and minus 44 is less than 0, so I'm going to put less than or equal to. And similarly, with the uh, line 5x plus 5 over 3x plus 2, the, uh, which is the line 1, we can see it is uh, below the line, so I'm going to put less than, but you can always check. You can say, okay, when you put the, the value of 0 and 0 into this inequality, um, or into this, you'll see what happens to the inequality sign. y is 0, and x is 0, we'll end up with 0 is less than 2, which is correct. That will become 0, that will become 0, that will be 0 is less than 2. So we know that this sign has to be also less than. So there we have the four inequalities which define this region R. Okay, and they're all solid lines, so we'll just put the equal sign underneath them. And that's the answer to this question. And that's, the sum, as I said, that's something which is a bit new in the syllabus which hasn't been here previously um, in the old C1 papers so that's why I added it to this paper so as I said this is the modified version of June 2016 C1 this part D is what I've added to the question and this is actually question 7 from that paper I've changed I modified the paper around and moved things about brought some things from the um, old C2 which are now in P1 and made this paper so this is the answer to that question um, thank you for watching. Other questions from the paper of June 2016 C1, you can find in this playlist over here. Okay. Uh, other questions from the topic of straight line graphs in general, you can find in the playlist that should appear somewhere in this region. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Um, thank you for watching and see you soon.